The approach we're instead going to take is based on a different hashing algorithm, not chaining. And this hashing algorithm is called cuckoo hashing. This is a cuckoo bird, thanks Wikipedia, and it's termed a brood parasite. But let's put it into more understandable English. This bird is one of the biggest jerks in the animal kingdom. Rather than take care of its own eggs and chicks, it instead lays its eggs in another bird's nest, throwing out the other bird's eggs to make room, and lets the other bird raise its chicks. See if you can detect why the algorithm I'm about to describe is called cuckoo hashing, as I describe it. The key to this method is having multiple hash tables instead of just one. Multiple hash functions, one per hash table, and those hash tables only allow one item in each one of their buckets. There is no chaining in this algorithm at all. In the example we'll show, we're going to have two hash tables and two hash functions, but the method generalizes to more than two. So here's what we're going to do at a high level. First, all the items that we want to hash, we'll use the first hash function and try to hash into the first hash table. Some of them will collide and fail, and by that I mean we're going to try to write multiple items into the same bucket, but we're only allowing one item per bucket. That's okay. If n items try to write into one hash bucket, we only require that one of them succeeds, and it doesn't really matter which one. So then, those that fail, we're going to take all the ones that are left over that failed, and we're going to use the second hash function to try to hash into the second hash table, and so on. Now, the cool part is what happens next, but we're going to go take an example here, and I'm going to show you how it works, and then we'll see exactly how this cuckoo hashing works.